Hey, hello. So today I want to talk to you about Morocco. So the last four months I've been traveling in Morocco, my own country, discovering all sorts of cities, 11 cities to be precise. Absolutely loved it. And I want to talk to you about the four things I've learned from these four months in Morocco, traveling solo, traveling on a budget. And I want to kind of debunk all the rumors you hear about Morocco being dangerous, Morocco being unsafe, Morocco is just Marrakesh. All of that so stay tuned here are my four top lessons about morocco so number one morocco is not just marrakesh i hear so many people a lot of my friends here in the uk everywhere when i say i'm from morocco they're like oh my god yes i've been to marrakesh that's great marrakesh is a wonderful place i love it and it's a great starting point for any journey because it's right in the middle and you've got a bit of everything but I call it the marketing department of Morocco, as in it's the shiny kind of thing that you show to tourists, everyone to come and you dig deep. Morocco is actually so vast and I actually divide it into four different countries, right? So you've got the red earth of Marrakesh, you've got the mountains around it, and then you've got the north of Morocco, which is mountains, rivers, Tangier, which has got the ocean and the Mediterranean Sea, Shifshawen, this incredible blue city nestled on the top of the mountains. It's just absolutely incredible. So I spent two weeks in the north of Morocco. I had never been there. And seriously, I felt like I was in another place. Uh, I felt like Europe but you still had these roots in Africa. It's just gorgeous. And then you've got the south, the, the deep south, and then the sea for people who love surfing. That's a whole other vibe. You've got these little fishermen villages, uh, just absolutely gorgeous. And then you've got the mega cities like Casablanca, Rabat, which is a cultural, uh, in the capital of the country, of course. I actually also forgot the fourth place is the desert. We also have the Sahara Desert on the west, so Merzouga, Zagora, all these places. So really, when you think about Morocco, you actually can't label it as one thing. It's not just tagine and Marrakesh and eating just this kind of food. As you dig in, we go to these four different areas, you'll see that each area has its own unique flavor, and that's what makes this country so rich and diverse. And as the king has said to famously said, it's a country with its roots. It's like a tree, its roots in Africa and its leaves in Europe. So you've got this wonderful mix and blend of African culture and European influence. And that's why each city has a different flavor. It's so unique. Essaouira is a place, it's actually my favorite city of all these 11 cities. Essaouira is a place that I actually adore because it's got Portuguese, French influence, Jewish, Berber, uh just got so much in this little tiny town and it's overlooking the sea and it's just beautiful number two so people will fascinate me and especially in morocco so this is a this is a bit of a weird one because each person will have a, their own experience with people but generally the culture as a moroccan as well i can tell you we are very very welcoming and even me like people thought i was spanish actually everywhere i went they thought i was spanish but even with that not knowing that i was moroccan i got the warmest welcome everywhere i went whether they spoke to me in arabic or spanish or english or french people are generally very welcoming they're curious they want to know about you where you're from they'll probably know your your language whatever you're speaking they'll try to speak it that's how much they want to connect with you and uh, some people might feel a bit shy about that or just remember it's completely normal this is what people do that it's not they're not trying to invade your privacy this is just regular customs in Morocco we love to welcome people we want to find out about them and we want to share our own culture so I think that's a very positive vibe that the Moroccans have speaking of people it's very important for you to know that there are Morocco is a very diverse country in terms of landscapes and flavors as we said but also the origins of people so you've got the Amazigh, Berber, wherever you want to call them which are the indigenous native tribes of North Africa and they're sort of mixed with Arabs as well and also some of them are 
pure and they still live in their villages up in the mountains or in the great south as well or even in the north of Morocco in the reef region there's a lot of Amazigh people so there's them there's also the Sahrawi people which are from the south so Akhla region from Zagora and all that there's also the city people so a bit more modern so, so yeah you've got a bit of everything all sorts of colors and shapes and different hairstyles and that's what makes Moroccan people wonderful however not careful with your cameras that's what I encountered the most and luckily I was using a very small camera so it was quite discreet but I also made sure to always ask before I film or if you take pictures with your phone just make sure that person is comfortable with that because there are a bit of uh, religious codes and conducts there you can't really just film in a mosque if someone is praying these little things there but it's just common sense number three solo travel that's a big one and solo traveling as a woman again with the safety issues Personally, I believe that anything you do with the right attitude, with the right approach, will be fine. So I was completely fine, hence I'm here today. I did get a little few comments here and there. Where's your husband? Or, yeah, this is not something to take personally, it's just part of the culture. People are used to seeing family units. Although there are so many solo female travelers I've met, especially in Shifshawen, Marrakesh, Tangier, women I mean, from all around the world, and I've met some incredible people like that actually, staying in hostels and all. So if you decide to go solo traveling, you will meet other solo travelers and you will see that it's completely tailored for you, it's very safe. Obviously, if you go off road alone, then that you might risk it, but that's anywhere around the world. You wouldn't just take a car and go off road. But if you were, let's say, between Marrakesh and the desert in that road with all the Berber villages, you're still very, very safe because it's such a big community feeling there. And if they see someone alone, man or woman, somewhere someone is going to try to help you and, and just make sure that you're going to the right place or if you need any help. So generally, I think the safety for a woman is really, really nice. I would just say dress accordingly. In Casablanca, it's very modern, so it's okay to dress for a nightlife or a party if you're with the right circle you can dress however you want if you're in a more traditional setting more conservative you will feel it again it's just about feeling your environment and dressing accordingly so I didn't have a, a car in this uh, 11 city tour during four months I was just using taxis and uh, the bus the bus is actually really good there's two main companies CTM and uh, Supratour and they go from the major cities so chef show into Casablanca and I was taking them alone again I was with fellow tourists uh, fellow travelers even Moroccan local people uh, very safe or you can even do guided tours so the previous year I had done a, a guided tour where it was just 100% local which was amazing and there was people from all ages uh, from mothers with their sons to women like me who just wanted to explore their country so you've got that option as well and that is also very safe even if you're the only one not speaking Arabic you'll probably be taken care of all right and last but not least number four my fourth most valuable lesson actually in Morocco is to not take anything personally and that is from even more than these four months uh, having been going to Morocco since I'm a child every holiday so I've lived in the UK all my life but I've gone to Morocco every holiday and I got to know the culture through my family, cousins and everything and they love to tease, yes, my cousins actually really prepared me <laughs> for the teasing, for the jokes and again it's part of the customs, it's part of the culture, don't take anything personally in Morocco. What I tend to do is just appreciate the environment where I am for what, it's, for what it is I pick. It's about your mindset really, it's about picking the things that you feel really positive about and just focusing on those because if you then focus on the stresses and the frustrations of the population which I'm not gonna lie Casablanca is the case it is my city I love it but damn it is frustrating sometimes with all the honking it is a very very hard hit on your nervous system so if you're constantly affected by that then you're not gonna survive so really don't take that personally. If someone's shouting and honking, just let that shit let that shit go. Because if you don't, it's just gonna get you and you're gonna end up resenting people, the country. Whereas actually what you can just do is ignore that honking, drive a few more minutes down the road, and you'll be at this incredible beach. And that's what I did as well in these moments, is just 
I went to nature. It's always going back to nature, finding what keeps me calm, what calms my nervous system, rerouting and reminding myself of my purpose. Why am I in this country? And why am I doing this? So for you as well, like if you get frustrated or something, just remember, don't take it personally. You will get people who will try to scam you. I've experienced that in Marrakesh, unfortunately. It will triple the price. Just laugh, smile and move on to the next. And just keep going with your gut, follow your vibe. And I think you'll overall have a positive experience if you stay positive in your head and just don't take anything personally.